Today we're going to ring in the new year with something very special. We're going to show you a bolo that doesn't show up very often, but it's well worth looking for because it sells for some incredible amounts of money. Hey, it's Don the Auction Professor. Today we're going to talk about a bolo item. Today we're going to talk about bells, mostly just cast bells. Let's hop over right now and show you some of the insane values that some of these go for. So for me, when I think of bells, I think of these big giant brass bells. What I remember back in the day on old farms and stuff of some relatives, these old style bells. Now this is a mission bell from 1810. A lot of these earlier bells are cast out of bronze or brass, and many of them are dated. If they're not dated, they least have the manufacturer on them. There's military, there's train bells, school bells, farm bells, business bells, all kinds of bells. This one sold for $695. Just a fine example, nice craftsmanship. Even if this wasn't old, it still would have sold for hundreds of dollars. Military bells do show up occasionally. I have run into them at auctions. I've even seen them at estate sales. They come in a multitude of sizes, all the way down to a little tiny one, all the way up to one that weighs a couple hundred pounds. It's just a solid piece, made to last. It's out in the weather. Most all of the ones I have ever seen for any type of U.S. military bell have been marked either U.S., U.S.N., or something along that line. There are some for almost every branch. They may have been base bells or something else. So bells go extremely well. Now, sometimes when I run into these, they're black as can be or dark green or just nasty looking. Most of these, as I said, are brass or bronze and they can be cleaned up. Now, I would never polish a bell. I would leave them with the patina that's on it. That's what most people want. This 1942 ship's bell here went for $2,250. Just a fine example of one of these bells. Now, they're in so many sizes. Now, I'm not sure on designations or anything like that or what size goes with what, but I would imagine there's regulations that state a certain size bell goes with a certain size ship. Now, we've run into some, too, that have had military ships the actual name on them which is extremely scarce you know where it came from those go for some insane amounts of money as well this one's just a plain one 80 pound bell if that gives you an idea now somebody's unfortunately cleaned this one i would never clean it 1100 dollars still it's still a very nice spell either way you go Another ship spell, this is a little smaller one. You can see the string so that they can clang it from the deck or wherever it may be. 1930 to 1940, it's a retired, very nice piece. It's only about 14 or 15 inches tall. Even the brackets or the yokes on some of these can go for hundreds of dollars. So the yoke is the part that holds it. We'll show you one, I think, here in just a minute. This one sold for $1,200. Now here's a really unique one. This is a Buddhist temple bell. It doesn't matter if they're old or not on many of these. They still, as I said, will sell for hundreds of dollars. Just in the amount of material used to make one of these can go for hundreds, just because of scrap value even. I would never scrap them. Many times some of these shapes and designs you'll run into in bells may not even look like a bell to you. It may not have the clangor in the inside or anything. It may have a broken off loop on the top. All of those are factors of why people could miss these. Mostly find these at estate sales, local live auctions, occasionally garage sales, occasionally church sales. I even find them at flea markets quite often. Not big giant ones or massive ones, but smaller ones. I, as I said, have run into military ones. They are out there, though. I do run into them. We do find them, and they always sell. Bells are one thing I always can sell very quickly, especially this style of bell. The handheld bells, not so much. We'll show you some different varieties as well in just a moment here. $1,650 on this one here. Very nice one. And this is by Mina Lee Company, West Troy, New York. Very nice example. The yoke is the part that holds the bell up on the very top. That's The bell is basically hung from. That is the yoke. Any of the pieces from some of these earlier large size bells can go for some good money. Many times you run into the bell and not have the yoke and you can't really hang it very well. $2,800 on this one. Fine example. Bells go all the way back. Many of them are dated as you saw before. 
Here is a John Deere cast iron farm bell. It was a novelty item. Probably it would have been something that may have been at a John Deere shop or a farming establishment. Maybe it would have been a promo or something even. $1,350 in this condition. It almost looks like a piece is broken, but I could be wrong on that. Either way, it's a very nice example of this. They have number two in the listing, so I would say they had two of these. Something that you would have found in a barn or at a local live auction, in my opinion. Now here's a Perco 420-6 brass fog bell. Now this would have been for a ship, some sort of nautical use, obviously. Something just for protection, basically. You ding it, you know, out in heavy fog so other ships could hear you. $200 on this piece. It's a smaller piece. It has the mounting brackets and all. It's not super, super old, I would say, by the maker on it. So still a nice example for 200 plus shipping. Now here's a temple bell. This could be Buddhist, maybe not necessarily, but this is a Japanese style Again, some of these may not look like a bell to somebody. It may not have the clangor on the inside. You may just see this. It may have broken pieces on it. Who knows? Any of that sort of thing is well worth buying. They flip very, very easily. This one went for $1,500. I've even seen welded and repaired bells go for thousands before, too. So something I always look for. I love bronze and copper and brass items. It's just a really cool area in my book. Love these sort of things. $1,500, as I said. Now here's a C.S. Bell Company Bell. C.S. Bell is a well-known one. You can find advertisements for them on envelopes and covers of the day. I've had trade cards with their name on them as well. 1886 to 1896, very well datable on most of these. It's got a number four yoke again. The yoke's the part on the top that the bell will swing from. This is a very fine example here, $600 has the clangor in the whole works. This is a complete unit, something maybe in a church steeple you would see or at a school as well. Now here's a wrought iron, I would say handmade, 1700s, 18th century piece. It's a dinner bell. Clangor, the whole works. Very nice example of this. This was probably ripped from some farm in New England would be my guess. $398. It doesn't look like much either. It's something that many people would pass over looking at it and thinking it's just some rusty artifact that has little to no value. Now this is Jorg Jensen. This is a Norwegian artist, if I'm not mistaken. Now Jensen made pieces all over the place. I have plates and things that I've showed you in halls from this exact same maker, mid-mod century Eames era. Just fine examples. Most anything marked by him is made of silver from what I see, or even gold in some cases. They all go for some decent money, even small pins, plates, dishware, bells. This is just something else. This is unique. It doesn't look like a normal bell. Many people may not even realize that until they pick it up. This is just a perfect example of that whole era. 350 bucks. It's sterling as well. Now here's a William IV silver table bell. That's more a style than anything else, I would say. Very nice either way. It has hallmarks, so you can date them. It has the clangor. The clangor itself has hallmarks on it also. $440 in U.S. This was sold from England. Very nice bell in my book. I like the bigger ones, but this is more along the lines of what you may run into. These smaller ones at estate sales, flea markets, even garage sales, believe it or not. I've run into some nice bells. Just something sitting in the garage. Even if they're mounted on a wall or something at a garage sale, I'll ask if they'll sell that bell. And I've been lucky enough to buy some that way. Sometimes they'll use them for dinner bell or something or just a joke. Now here's a church bell. This is a Victorian 1850s. This is a fine example. Similar styles are still used in the Catholic Church to this day. Uh, it's just a nice example. It makes a unique chiming sound like multiple bells all at once. If you haven't heard one, it's really unique. It's different. Now, I do run into these occasionally. I've even bought them at a church sale. I have never seen one this old in real life, though. Any of these, though, will sell for some decent money. This one went for 620 bucks. another one from England. Tiffany & Company, Sterling, I don't think I need to say much more. $200, even if these are new, just the name Tiffany on a bell like this can add 100 150 bucks. Chances are if this was just some standard Sterling bell with what silver's going for right now, it'd be worth about 50 bucks. So it adds a considerable amount just having that name Tiffany on it. Usually fine quality, nicely made pieces. 200 as I said. Now this next one here is from a hotel. It's one of the countertop ones you would 
tap to ding. You tap the shell and this one dings. It's a tortoise. This one's really unique. I really do like this one here. $191.99. Another piece from England. I've seen them in all kinds of things. One of my favorite ones I've ever seen was in the shape of a snail. And you tap the back of the snail's shell and it would ding. Now, many people may not even know what this was until they picked it up. And even once they picked it up, they may not understand it. Just a fine example of this sort of thing. Here's another whole category. You've got these graduated Christmas sleigh bells. Even individual sleigh bells can go for some good money. Some of them date way back. There's bronze ones, there's copper ones, there's brass ones, and there's also cast iron ones of these bells. Croto bells, I believe some of the people call them in some countries. Any of these can go for some good money. If they're still on the actual belt leather workings of it, they can go for some insane amounts of money. I've seen some massive ones of these go for thousands of dollars. Just a phenomenal piece here. Any of these I would snag up in a second. They do make some newer versions of these, but you can easily tell the difference if you've seen even some remotely old leather. Fine example for $400, really a little under what I would expect it to go for. Just excellent piece here. Now these last ones here are pretty much like sleigh bells, but these would have been on camels and elephants and things along that line. They had them all over the place. You can see some in Japanese culture. You can see them in like Tibet and things along that line too. Even in through Europe, you'll find all kinds of these animal style bells. Most people would have had them on again, so they'd know where their animals were for one thing. A little harder to lose them if you can hear them jingling in the background. So just an excellent example here. Very unique. These would be cast also. $238.59. A lot of the bells like this remind me of wind chimes also that you would have had in the backyard as a kid or something. Really nice area to look for. Again, a lot of these are in cleaned condition. You can run into these and they'll be black or brown or rusty looking or greenish. Just really nasty ones. They may not even jingle. It may even be missing the clangor in it. So take a look at it. Even in those conditions, even with the patina, even missing the clangor, you can replace the clangor, you can clean the bell to some extent, they all will sell, even parts and pieces as we've discussed. It's not something you're going to find all the time, but it's another area you need to be looking for because there's some insane amounts of money available in this field. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend. Just a store. It's familiar to you as an old pair of shoes. What's so different about it? The fact that down the street there's another one just like it. Or almost. The fact that she thinks just as highly of several stores in the neighborhood as she does of yours. Or almost. And she can change her mind about that any day of the week. In a word, Arthur, almost. And that's what makes competition. Competition between products on the shelves, between stores in the neighborhood. Everybody trying, and everybody free to try to make himself so good that the other fellow never catches up. Not just as good, but better. And still make the profit he needs to stay better, because the other fellow will try to get better too. Oh, it's a real battle, Arthur. All sides, evenly matched, or almost. It's a tight ball game. It's not the difference between day and night, dog and cat, summer and winter. It's difference by a nose. Difference by a shade better form. It's difference by a fraction of an inch. It's competition, close competition, where just a little more effort counts big. You don't have that extra effort, and right away you're almost.